That's supposed to be teaching, not playing. You caught me playing the harp. Wow, okay. My name is Carolyn Deal, and welcome back. I'm going to do something in this video that will be great for beginners, but actually I needed it about 10 years into playing the harp, so it will maybe benefit lots of people. And it's just so that you'll know about notes and chords. Fortunately, there are only seven notes. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven notes, so that's not that overwhelming. And when I've got my harp tuned with no sharps or flats, there's just those notes. So A, B, C. And I've got it tuned in C, and that's a C scale, has no sharps or flats. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then the next one is just the C again. So the other really neat thing about harp and music is that a chord, beautiful chords, a chord only has three notes. That's it. So if you find out what those three notes are, a whole lot will open up to you in music. And I'll lead you into that as time goes by, some of it in this video. But anyway, so in the key of C, the chords that are sort of, I, I think of them as vanilla, the major chords are C, F, and G. They're called major. And then the minor ones are A minor, D minor, and E minor. And they're more soulful, past oriented, sometimes a little scary or pensive. And the major, they're sort of happy, present, vanilla. Okay. So anyway, but each chord is just three notes. So we're going to talk about the C chord in this video because by the end of the week you will know the C chord inside and out because it is just C, you skip a note, and C is the red one. So the red one, skip a note, and then E, skip a note, and that's the blue one that you're skipping, and then G. To learn, it helps to know how your brain works. You learn things by visual input, by auditory input, how it sounds, and by kinesthetic, how it feels. So first of all, you're going to make letters C, E, and G and put them all over your house, on the floor, also on the bathroom mirror, at the kitchen window so that you'll see them all the time and use your visual channel to learn. They can be in any order, C, E, G, E, G, C. C, C, C all in one place, E, E, E all in one place, <laughs> like that. When I come down from my loft, I'm going to see these letters. When I go up to my loft, I'm going to see these letters. A way to use your visual and auditory and kinesthetic learning is to actually be at your harp with the strings. I'm going to put my hand on the red string and I'm going to say it. So that's auditory language and I'm going to pluck it. C. 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 Then I'm going to go to the next one. Skip a string, go to the next one. So I'm looking. And I can notice that the E is just below the blue string. I use colors a lot for visual reference. Reference. So, E, E, E. And then I skip the blue one and I go to G. That's easy. The E and the G are on either side of the blue, like they straddle it. And I say it, G, G. So I'm feeling where they are in space. I'm also saying them and I'm hearing them. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Auditory, kinesthetic. And then I can do them different places in the heart. I put the C on the top, C, G, 
E. I'm going to say them out loud. C, G, E, C, E. auditory and kinesthetic. It can be in any order. So C, E, G, I'm going to play it on a double strum, is called a triad. But then you've got that's a different sound. And that's just inverting the chords. You're taking that part and throwing it up here on the top. So you still have these two. Three notes, C, E, G, or E, G, C. And that's called a first inversion. I always remember it because your first finger is on the C. It's a C chord, a first inversion C chord. It's inverted. And remember, you're, you're uh, Fingers are one, two, three, four. You don't use your pinky at the heart. So one is on there. There's one other way to invert the chord, and that is to now take this E and put it on top. So then you've got G, C, E. And that's called a second inversion. I remember it because my second finger is on the name of the chord. That's a second inversion. And then back to the, the triad the root chord, the root of a tree. The way that I learn things in hand poses is that a first inversion of a chord is shaped like when you make quotation marks in the air. So that's a quotation pose. It's the E, G, and C. You can play it down or you can play it up. Then the second inversion chord I call that the swimmer's pose because for some reason that looks like a guy swimming. That looks like a, a woman or a guy swimming, legs kicking, and this is like the, the arm doing the crawl. So anyway, you might come up with a different image, but I think imagery is a really good way to be able to picture things and put them on the harp. So the swimmer's pose. And I just call it triad, triad. So, there are a lot of reasons why it's good to know what the notes are in a chord. For instance, if I'm doing a melody up here, and I want to be able to know what chords to pick to go with this, I'm playing a C there, so I'm going, okay, what chords have a C? There will be three chords that have a C, so we'll talk about that in the next video. But I'm just going to show you right now the three chords that have a C in them. The C chord, that's not what I want. The uh, F chord, no, and the A minor chord, aha. going to do a D. There are three chords that have a D. There's a D chord, 
Mm, I don't think so. There's the G chord. Aha, I think that's it. And what's the other one that has a D? Oh, a B. Nope, so it's, it's the G chord. Okay. So that's just a hint of where you're going with this knowledge. C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. Have a great week with that.